Today, we have such an incredible program for you because we're going to address something that's been really challenging out there. And it's these babies, the masks. And we have a perfect person, a good friend of mine, an incredible friend of mine, someone that has taught me so much, has helped me so much with my own health and wellness. His name's Sean Float. Sean has been a physical therapist for over 27 years. He started when he was two years old. Um, you'll notice, know what I mean when you see him. He looks very young for having 27 years of experience. Um, but his passion is in medical physiology and movement, how the body actually moves with its physiology. So um, he is also an oxygen advantage advanced instructor. So please, in the chats, let's welcome our good friend, Sean Float. Hey, Sean. Hey, Andrew. Thanks so much so, for having me back. Absolutely. It has been a while, too. You were one of our early um, early guests when we were doing, what were we calling it, Cabin Fever on Friday morning. Yeah. Right when the down first happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, that was so, awesome. Yeah. Tell us, um, tell us a little bit about what got you excited about the, the breathwork aspect of things, because you've been a, you know, a physical therapist for so long. So what kind of connected you to that passion with the breath aspect? You know, Andrew, it, it, I think it just sort of like I had this something isn't quite gluing with mm -hmm. what I was doing with my clients, even my own yoga practice, mm -hmm. in my meditation practice as I was introduced to breath work. Like there just, there seemed to be some sort of unsettledness that I, either in my clients or myself, that it was like, and I actually accidentally stumbled into um, the founder of Oxygen Advantage and an interview. And it just, it was like love at first sight. Yeah. And it's nice. just, it's been the glue. It's transformed a lot of the clients that I've seen for a while in very short periods of time. And um, I think there's so much potential as, as you experienced. Yeah, I mean, and I'm actually going through the certification as well. Sean got me hooked because I was one of the people that was um, training with Sean. And it was so effective for me. And especially as a coach, you know, for people for mindset and things, I, I just saw so much potential to bring it into the coaching world, to bring it into how I train other teachers and speakers. So um, it's, it's really been incredible for both of us. Yeah. Um, I know as we kind of talked about something that we wanted to do today, we, we wanted to kind of jump in and give everyone a, a taste and an experience right off the bat. So yep. let, let's jump right in. Great. Yeah, I think experience is always better than trying to get your mind wrapped around what we're going to talk about. So what I'd like everybody to do is find a comfortable seat or you can stand while you're doing this. Take your mask off if you've got if you're having to wear it. <laughs> We'll get back to that. And what I want you to do is I want you just to tap into what your regular breath, excuse me, your regular breathing pattern is right now. We oftentimes try and put a little bit of a control on it, but I want you just to touch and feel what your breath is right now. Just to nor your inhale and exhale. I would say normal, but Normal has a weird word. So I'm actually just saying like, what is your breath right now? And feel that for about three or four breaths without doing anything. Just feel yourself. Don't put any judgment on it. So the first exercise, and I think the way you find your way is to feel. So then the exercise is going to be, and I'll, go, I'll take you through this, but the exercise and the cues are we're going to hold our nose at the end of an exhale for a very short period of time. And we're going to repeat this for about 10 or 11 times. In between each pinch of the nose, you're going to return to your regular breathing that you just experienced. Some of you are going to not be able to hold your nose for five seconds and return to normal breathing or regular breathing that you feel. And so if that's the case, I don't want you to feel stressed. I want you to back off and maybe do it for half as long as we count or you count to three seconds instead of I'll go to five. But recognize that at five seconds of you pinching your nose, if that's stressful, I want you to make a comment and let us know because these are key indicators for how you find your way. 
So the, the whole idea is pinch you the nose, I'll count, and we'll just do 10 repetitions. I'll take you through the exercise. So you do nothing but just follow along. Is everybody Sean, ready? Before, before we start, I'm going to have you pause just for a second because sure. we did actually, um, luckily behind the scenes, we were able to get us connected to Facebook. So okay. if you can just do a quick, just kind of jump back just a few moments just yeah. to set up our Facebook crowd on what we're doing okay. just real quick before we do the exercise. Sure. So this first exercise is available to everybody. It's what we call a warm-up exercise or a recovery exercise. And what you're doing is you're going to get a taste of how you hold your breath without stress. So the exercise is I want you to feel your regular breath right now without doing anything to it. Just feel how you're breathing in and out for three or four breaths. So you get a sense of what it feels like for your regular breath, because that's your reference. What we're going to do is I'll take you through at the end of your exhale, you're going to pinch your nose and I'll count. I'm going to count to five. If after five seconds, you feel like you can return to your regular breathing that you're experiencing right now without any stress, without any change in that. Great. You're going to keep it up as we go through this for a short period of time. If that stresses you out, then drop the amount. Maybe at, when I count to, I'll go five, four, three. If I get to three and two, you just release your nose and wait for the rest of us to start up again. Okay? So there's no stress. I don't want any change in your regular breathing pattern. This is just to get a sense of pinching the nose. Okay? All right. Is that great? Yeah. So here we go. So just touch into your regular breathing, feel your inhale, feel your natural exhale. Do one more of those, natural inhale, natural exhale, and at the end of the exhale, pinch your nose and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, release to normal breathing or regular breathing as you felt before. You're going to do two or three breaths like that. At the end of your next exhale, pinch your nose again and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, release. Normal breathing for 10 to 15 seconds. At the end of your next exhale, pinch your nose. Five, four, three, two, one, release, normal breathing for 10 to 15 seconds. At the end of your next exhale, pinch your nose and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, release, normal breathing. Regular breathing. If some of you are having irregular breathings, then lessen the amount of hold. Maybe you let go when I count to one or two. At the end of your next exhale, pinch your nose and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Release. Regular breathing for 10 to 15 seconds. We're going to do five more of these. So if you are getting any stress or anxiety, you can wait and just relax while the rest of us finish. There's no stress here. The end of your next exhale, pinch your nose and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, release and regular breathing for the next 10 to 15 seconds. Some of you might need 30 seconds in between your breath holds. That's okay if you have a very difficult time. At the end of your next exhale, you'll pinch your nose and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, release and regular breathing for 10 to 15 seconds. Or if you're in that category, you need longer, then just take it longer for the next couple repetitions. At the end of your next exhale, pinch your nose and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Regular breathing, 10 to 15 seconds. So this is the regular exercise or practice. Again, if you need to vary this, please let us know. There's variations. 
Then into your next exhale, pinch your nose and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Regular breathing. We'll do one more. So at the end of your next exhale, pinch your nose and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Regular breathing. So that's our warm up, Andrew. Nice. This one is so available for everybody. You can, we can vary it in terms of what happens in between each brush hold, but this is really, this is accessible from Patrick's view for anybody who has any medical condition. We treat, we do it with the current COVID conditions that people are having. So it's available. It's not a big stressor, but if it is, please let us know. Yeah. So let's take a quick poll. So um, we want you to just type in a number into in the chat for us because we want to find out what, what the experience was for you. So if you felt really calm during that whole 10 reps, I want you to type a one into the chat. If you felt like it wasn't too bad, you felt a little bit of discomfort, but it was totally fine, type a two. If you felt like you were kind of wanting to take a deeper breath, it was a little bit stressful, type a three. And if you felt like, I can't do this. I had to stop. Type of four in there. So again, one is if you felt really calm during it. Two is a little bit of discomfort. Three is it was pretty tough, but you could hang in there. And four is I, I had to stop. So just pop it into the chat for us. Nice. Lots of ones. That's good. Couple twos. Nice. Or ones coming in. Oh, look, my mom's, she put one. Hey, one good one. job. <laughs> <laughs> She's been working on this. She's been doing good. Nice. I love to see that everyone had a good experience because that's the whole point. There are, there's a few, some people had a little stress. Yeah, there's a little delay. So it'll probably take a few moments yeah. just to get the rest of the answers in. But there, there was a couple that felt a little bit of stress from Yeah. The nice. other thing with the ones that did a one, if you want to add a one or as a one for if you got any calming effect with that, a two if your mouth was watering more, and three if you didn't feel any change of relaxation or a little increased moisture in your mouth. These are um, best friend in your thread says I was calm but only could make it about three reps, and then I started to yawn a ton. Aha. Uh -huh. That, yeah, that happens. That happens. So, That's either somebody's getting very relaxed. Mm -hmm. They've been in a high state of arousal and there's a big drop. Yeah. Or they are requiring more oxygen. They think the body needs more oxygen. So it's per trying to produce a yawn. Right. Yeah, and Angela said um, she has sleep apnea, so it was a little uncomfortable. So that's yeah. great, Angela. This is going to be awesome for you. We're going to talk about more in just a minute, and especially especially for your sleep apnea. This can be super, super beneficial for you. So, um, you know, yeah. one of the things that the reason we wanted to talk about this, Sean, is that we recognize through talking with lots of people that are wearing masks all day long that it feels uncomfortable. It feels yeah. claustrophobic. It feels, you know, restrictive. You're noticing that recirculation of air behind the mask. And so it starts to create a lot of stress. And so there has been, of course, this challenge. But really, there's a huge opportunity here for us, too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, when I first started into this current state of affairs that we're in and um, people required to wear a mask when they would come in and see me for clinical work or workers, you know, that have to wear the mask all day. The biggest thing I heard was the dread around having to wear this mask. And I was right. I was bought into it. It was like, yeah, man, this is, and I know it's really hard. I, it, it, I struggle for long periods of time with the mask on. And what actually Patrick pointed toward, and I really trusted him was, He's, he travels and he had to wear a mask for seven to eight hours. Patrick McEwen, the, the founder of Oxygen Advantage. And he said, you know, he wore it for eight hours. He took all his tests to make sure to see what effects it was having, sleep, all these things. And he said, really, if we know how to breathe behind the mask, 
it is not a stressor. It actually can be a facilitator for health. Right. And there's actually an exercise in the breathing cure book that just got released that he has people cup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I actually gave you that one early on. Yes. And I actually really enjoyed it. So, yeah. So you want to do this all day? <laughs> yeah, no, not really. No. So I think it's important that we sort of give a perspective of what people are feeling of maybe why they feel so stressed behind the mask. Can we do that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So what you're doing is you're recirculating your breathing air. There are some uncomfortablenesses with that. One is if you had a pretty garlicky lunch, it's going to affect you. <laughs> sure. The other one that's more physiologically is that what you're expiring is CO2 or carbon dioxide. And that is the natural metabolic process of every activity we do. But in your profession where you're up on your feet all day and you're talking with people and you've got your arms working and you're, you know, you're, you're pretty active, mm -hmm. sometimes overactive, right? And that produces more CO2 than the person who's just like you and I sitting behind the screen right now. We would have a less production of that because of the activity. So we add more CO2 breathing out. And if you have a sensitivity to that CO2, your range of tolerance has gotten smaller, you will feel breathless. You will feel more stressed. It will trigger panic or anxiety like a suffocation. And that's what happens is the need to breathe is actually from the sensitivity of CO2, not that you need more oxygen. And that is a thing that I really want to get across to all of everyone's watching and anybody who wants to look into their health is that we can train our sensitivity to CO2 and use it that it actually stimulates the oxygen to be removed from the red blood cell into the organs and the tissues and the muscles for any activity that you do. That's, that's the juice right there is how can we work with this feeling of breathlessness and train that for our mind and for our bodies. And that's yeah. what we get to do if we can be conscious behind the mask. As you, I, you came up with the words invincible breathing, that's just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so. you know, I, I just wanna tell people right now, like we're not here to talk about whether masks are good or bad. So I'd appreciate it if you don't use our comment box to promote whether you enjoy masks, like masks or against masks. This is a gift to people that are required to wear a mask that we're trying to help people and become healthier. So please, I'd really appreciate it if we don't turn our comment box into a discussion about masks today. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things, Sean, that I think is also really important here is, yes, we are talking about trying to help people with that have to wear these um, or choose to wear those. But really, this is about lifestyle. This is about our autonomic nervous system. And yeah. everything affects everything. We were talking about how that everything's kind of a cycle. So our breath affects the autonomic nervous system. And the mm -hmm. nervous system affects the breath in return. And so we have a really great opportunity as we study how to adjust our breath to affect our nervous system, too. And thank yeah. you, Ethan. I appreciate that. That's really awesome. Um, so a lot of what we're going to talk about today is stuff that whether you're wearing a mask or whether you're not is going to benefit you so greatly. And, yeah. that, you know, what I'm going to do, Sean, just real quick, too, is I want to show them. So this is a pulse oximeter. And I want you to see that right now, especially because I'm talking a lot, my um, ox oxygen level is at 94. So which is the low do, range for optimal. Yeah, so I'm at the low range for optimal because I'm talking quite a bit. I'm going to put this on so that I can show you that my oxygen level is not going to plummet because what Sean said is that we don't actually have to be concerned with the mask actually reducing our oxygen levels in our body to something that's unsafe. Yeah. 
it might drop a tiny bit. Who knows? But it's not going to drop to unsafe levels. So I'm You're not going to go into this, hypoxia. Yeah. But um, I'm going to let you kind of talk to them about like the, the nose breathing, which is yeah. you know such an essential part of this. Sure. So what Andrew was talking about, how we change the nervous system, I just want you to know that oxygen, when you inhale, that is a stimulant. It's like caffeine. When we exhale and we feel CO2 through exhalation or we're learning how to train, how to work with CO2, that is actually a down regulator. So it makes you calm. A lot of you might mm -hmm. felt calm when we did the breath hold. So understand that if you're trying to get relaxed, it doesn't help you to take a deep breath. And a deep breath does not mean that you have to puff your chest. That's why we want to use the nose because the nose triggers is the only thing that triggers your diaphragm. Your mouth does not trigger a, a low breath where the gear at all the gas exchange and spinal help in your low ribs in your low lungs is what's accessed when you breathe through the nose. So what I want you to experience right now is everyone as long as you don't have a real stuffy nose, I want you just to feel an inhale and an exhale naturally. And I want you to feel, put your hands on your low ribs and see if you feel the low ribs moving with your nose breathing. Some of you, it may not move a lot because you've been held for a long period of time and they're already tight. So there's not going to be a lot of a movement. And that's one thing to consider is if you're trying to hold yourself up, your low ribs aren't going to move a lot. Oh, it actually went up a little. <laughs> but look yep. at your heart rate. That's huge, Andrew. Yeah. So that what Andrew's showing you right there is he down regulated. He was at 104 beats per minute while he was sitting there talking and probably doing whatever he's doing behind the scenes for all of us. He took a moment, put the mask on, did some recirculating, knows how to work with the air hunger or the breathless feeling, was with that. And his heart rate went down back probably to a more resting, comfortable level. Do you feel a lot more at ease? Oh, yeah, totally. And what about, do you feel a little more clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And just all I did is just put the mask on and just kind of nasal breathe as, as we do. And it just totally, and because of that little bit of recirculation of carbon dioxide and just that relaxed nose breath. Yeah. That was it actually brilliant. improved my condition. <laughs> <laughs> so what the thing is though, is that most of you who are experiencing breathlessness as you're just breathing through the nose, you might notice like you want to take a deeper breath. Mm -hmm. So that's where sometimes people will default to the mouth to try and get air in. And all you're doing, so all I want people to do right now is to shift to a mouth breath and notice what part of your chest you access. Maybe you even get tension when you mouth breathe versus when you nose breathe. So everyone it feels weird for me to mouth breathe anymore. I know. I still catch myself occasionally with my mouth open. It almost so automatically this puts me up in my chest. It's interesting. Yeah. And all that. So somebody who has neck tension or headaches, it may not be mechanical. Mm -hmm. And so the idea with what Andrew and I want to give this first exercise is we want you to have a goal of being able to nasal breathe through the day. Behind your mask. Yeah. I want if, everyone um, to have that as a sorry, go possible ahead. goal, say, four to six weeks from now. Hmm. And if yeah, you struggle, curious. what's that? Sorry, go ahead. No, as if you struggle with trying to keep a nose breathe, just recognize maybe what state you're in in your body. Like, are you uprooted? Do you feel like you're hurried? Do you have a lot on your mind? Um, did you not sleep well the night before? So this inability to tolerate being able to breathe with your nose like Andrew was doing and, you know, 
again, take your time with this because it takes time. This is a, not a linear progression. It'll bump and bump and bump. Mm -hmm. But over time, can you have more comfort behind the mask? If you need to mouth breathe, that's fine. But just recognize there are other factors that are contributing to why you have to mouth breathe. Nice. Yeah, and I just noticed Terry Duddy said, I do catch myself breathing through my mouth at work wearing a mask. And kind of like Sean said, most likely what's happening is you're starting to feel just a little bit short of breath. And as soon as a lot of times people feel a little short of breath, they do shift to mouth breathing. There's less restriction with mouth breathing. Yep. There's a bigger open tube. So it feels like, oh, I can get more breath, but it's actually much healthier for you and much more efficient for your body to stay with the nose breathing. So if you notice that Tara, just play with trying to you know, close the mouth and just come back to a nice natural or a, a nice natural pace with your nose. Um, and Lori said mouth breathing raises my breath to the top of my chest and it's a shorter breath. I noticed that same thing too. Um, Wendy's saying oh. that's great, gonna nasal breathe. You already noticed it, Wendy, that's awesome. Yeah, good. And yes, this is huge too, right, Sean? Maybe oh my gosh, that. that's brilliant, Wendy. <laughs> Talk about hydration, right? I mean, the nose, yeah. it's the humidifier. It's the humidifier. Mm -hmm. And move, going through your mouth will dry you out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Thank there's you, so Wendy. many aspects that are so much more beneficial to your body with the nasal breathing. And yeah. one of the things that we do run into, Sean, you know, especially as hairdressers, and I know not everyone's a hairdresser here watching today, but for hairdressers, part of our job is talking. And oh, talking gosh. is by in and of itself, it's kind of, it's mouth breathing because we tend to talk, 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 talk through the mouth and so we get dry we get out of breath it and we kind of hyperventilate actually with mouth right breathing. so right. you know a couple of things that i've noticed for myself that i you know for my hairdresser friends out there is just notice when you have an opportunity that if you are mouth breathing and you're feeling out of breath it's a great opportunity to check in with yourself am i talking a lot mm. this might be a great cue to go hmm I might have just talked a lot and not asked many questions to my client in my chair. So it could be an opportunity to help you also have a little cue that it's like, hmm, it's time to ask some questions and ask, you know, ask my client what's happening. And, you know, of course, we have clients that sit on our chair too, Sean, that they want to talk. Like they want to find out what we're up to, what we're doing. And I just want to say too that it's absolutely okay as a professional especially those of us that are out there busy behind the chair, you know, doing multiple clients, it's okay to um, ask permission to take a pause. It's okay yeah. to say, hey, you know, I'd love to chat more with you. I kind of want to focus in on the haircut right now just for a few moments. Like, you know, I hope you don't mind. It might just be a little quiet for a little while so I can focus on these foils or maybe I can focus on my, my haircut a little bit. People are very open to that kind of cue. So um, yeah. if you do feel like you're getting out of breath and you do feel like you're talking too much, you know, just check in and take a break and come back to that natural breath through the nose and just resettle yourself. Yeah, I, that's so brilliant, Andrew. I mean, because it is giving yourself that pause and giving yourself permission to listen. I mean, mm -hmm. and you get to then... I mean, what a great thing to listen and then just be with yourself while you're listening. And I mean, there's so many great interactions in that form. And I will say also, I'm, I'm curious in the end of the day. So mm -hmm. your last few clients and you've got to do some fine work. You, you probably don't have the same focus. You're tired. If you've been mouth breathing, you will lose clarity in your head. You'll get foggy. Mm -hmm. You might lose focus. Yep. And so, you know, this will help people to have more energy through their day. And we're going to give a few more things to help with that. But, you know, I, I could see where it could be even more stress. Like, oh, my God, Miss James is coming in. And I, 
Mm -hmm. She's got this very fine and I'm so tired and my fingers are, you know, not working and all, you know, just the, the nature of fatigue. Yeah. 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 Shirley's getting a lot out of this. She's like the nose humidifier. What? Cool. Um, <laughs> this is a great question though, from Tara, because this is, this is a perfect example of potentially what might be happening. So she's asking, would the mouth breathing lead to lightheadedness and headaches? Yes. I think because everything gets jammed up above, um, you'll see that you'll be a lot thicker. These muscles will be tighter. You'll be more stiff in your throat. And that tension, because your body's adapting to the mouth breathing, which is only upper chest, mm. neck, as you were saying. And so how many times do we breathe in a day? Those tissues will respond to that and you'll get tension thickness, which then can produce all those symptoms that she's talking about. Yeah. I see it a lot. So, yeah. And, and if, if you, have, if you are a mouth breather, you know, take shave, prune a few things off at a time. Don't set a goal of you're going to nose breathe all day. I mean, that would, that's, we're going to, you want to build to that, but don't stress yourself out if you have to. The mouth breathing, Andrew, one thing I want to say is that most people will off gas by trying to mouth breathe. They're trying to blow off the CO2 and that actually is not very helpful. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. And I mean, that kind of takes us into our next next topic pretty, pretty perfectly, because one of the things that we talk about is that feeling of breathlessness. It's because, and you kind of set this up in the beginning, it's because that our body is too sensitive to the CO2 at this point, because yeah. we have been hyperventilating for so long. We've been taking those short little breaths and getting rid of all of our CO2, which we should have a certain level of CO2 within the body that now our body is so sensitive to the CO2. As soon as we do get a little extra CO2, like recirculating behind the mask, that's what starts to send that sense into our body. Like, oh, I need to take bigger, deeper breaths, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I, we can go about the desensitizing and starting to train to increase our tolerance or decrease our sensitivity and reactivity to the CO2 in a couple different ways. Mm -hmm. we can, if everybody wants to get their mask or if you're tired of your mask, then just cup your hands. And all you're going to do is again, if this is too stressful, you do three seconds in three seconds out. Let's actually, everybody start with that. And then for those of you that can feel okay with it, we'll go to five seconds. Okay. So it's your regular breathing, no change. What you notice is you'll start to get a little breath hunger or air hunger, breathlessness. And my suggestion to you is why we're doing this. If you feel that, can you be with it and relax into it? If you can't, then let go for a period of time until you can resettle and come back to it as we go. Is that clear? All right. So everyone cup. Try and create as little holes in your hands and just cover your mouth. And begin to nose breathe in for three seconds, out for three seconds. So I'll count. In, two, three, out, two, three, 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 in, two, three, out, two, three. Those of you that can, we'll go to five. Those of you that want to stick with three, you stay with three. In, two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four, five. In, two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four, 
five, in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, and five. Still at 95. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do that because I just wanted to prove that even with completely cupping my hands over my nose and taking very slow breaths, I am still at perfectly in awesome. Within good oxygenation. Levels. So how do you, how do people feel out there? Go back to the, do you feel calm? Do you feel settled? Do you feel a little lighter, clearer in the head, less brain fog? Do you have a little more watery mouth? Do you feel a little more juicy? Do your hands and feet feel a little warmer? That's another indicator of hyperventilation and difficulties is cold hands and feet. Ooh, Wendy's saying, I'm feeling high and calm. <laughs> Shoulders <laughs> relaxed for Shirley. Shirley's saying, I'm feeling great. T total, uh, Shoulders are relaxed. Felt totally fine. Wow. Um, good question from Lori here too. Is this cadence important? It feels like there's a normal pause that happens after the exhale and before the inhale. Yes. Great question. Yeah. And that is true. There is a natural pause. We wanted to kind of just keep it as simple as we could with just a rate for this introduction. But yes. In some of the exercises, as well as in your daily functional breathing, everyday breathing, that pause at the end of the exhale is a good sign that you're in a more relaxed, balanced state. Mm -hmm. But if you exhale and automatically need to inhale, and it's more of a, you know, that's, that's not a good adaptation to how you're responding in your day. But yes, a natural exhale is, is good to have. Yeah. And we, we used this balanced cadence um, with multiple brain integration techniques because with this balanced case, uh, balanced cadence, the theory, and of course there's lots and lots of different ways to do this, but the theory is that because the in-breath Bring, brings us into the sympathetic aspect of the nervous system and the out breath brings us into the parasympathetic by having a perfectly even in a perfectly even out we kind of get that nice even flow back and forth from the parasympathetic to the sympathetic and so you can play with that too right sean you could do four seconds in and six seconds out if you'd like to with the cadence yeah you could the one thing i want to caution on just counting rate and this is something that has been identified early, early, early on was the trouble with counting a rate, a cadence breath is when people start to feel breathless, they will increase the volume of the breath. They will take in more air. So I encourage you if you do a cadence breath or if you're teaching clients is to keep the same volume how much someone's taking in and because the compensation is is to over breathe as you slow down someone's breath mm -hmm. and you need both variables in order to understand the physiology of how to get to a more functional breathing pattern yeah and yeah. you know to clarify too part of the purpose of what sean's taking us through right now is to actually get you to a place where you do feel a little tiny bit of air hunger yeah. because the purpose of this particular exercise is to start to train the receptors in our body to notice like oh hey there's a little bit more co2 in the blood so that initially usually makes us want to go oh i gotta take a bigger deeper breath mm -hmm. but part of the purpose of this kind of slower pace of breath and not taking too much air 
is so that our body does touch that sensation of, hmm, I want to take a bigger breath. But if we just stick with the cadence breathing, it trains the body then it, and it goes, oh, no, we're totally fine. This is totally fine to have a little bit more CO2 in our bloodstream. Yeah. And so that helps us become less sensitive when CO2 does start to increase when we're in, especially in wearing the mask a little right. bit. Right. Right. And so I think behind the mask, it's important just to maybe... You know, it would be enough to have focus on your client and talking or maybe not talking, but doing your work just to notice what Andrew was saying is just have a, you know, a, an in and out that has a rhythm to it. Try and avoid the erratic breathing patterns or the yawning or the, you know, whatever it is that creates sort of an erratic breathing pattern because you're under some hyper state yeah yeah and i will just add to that one with cupping is you can add a, you can decrease the inhale a little bit as you progress you know it'd like three and three or five and five is fine is then take a little less in for that count of three or count of five probably more a count of five like go 75 percent of your regular inhale and then a normal exhale and That'll start to trigger a little more air hunger. Yeah. But you don't go into panic or anxiety or stress. This is not a stress exercise. So, and let me just say this for my friends out there that are a little bit competitive and or want to push and like, yeah. want to like, you know, work harder, work harder because it's going to make the effect better. Not true. Like Sean said, because uh, I'm talking from experience because I want to do the best. I want to be you know, like the hero. I want to do it the best. And so when I first started to do this breath work training, I pushed myself yeah. and I actually noticed it actually took me the, uh, the opposite direction. And there's a measurement that we use in this breathing pattern called the Bolt score. And the Bolt score tells us, you know, our sensitivity to this carbon dioxide. And so my Bolt score wasn't changing, but I was practicing really hard. And I, I noticed it was because I was training too hard. I was pushing yeah. too hard and I was pushing myself into that stress response, which that's not going to help. So that's what we're definitely trying to get to out of. Them. Right. That's a great point, Andrew, is you can't work hard at the breath. Mm -hmm. It actually is requiring you to do something different and do your activities in a different way. Mm hmm. And I think that gets to our point in the beginning about nervous system response and how we actually carry out our livelihoods is the breath is one of the most intimate ways that, and the bolt score to show you how you're doing. Yeah. And I'll just say for those of you that have trouble getting to sleep because you've been aroused all day, use this one. Mm -hmm. It's so it'll put you right to sleep. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just want to touch on this too. Wendy said, I think I'll do this with my clients um, just to breathe and relax as I do gray hair. That is awesome, Wendy, because I will tell you this, and we're going to talk about this in just a minute too, as we start to wrap up in a little bit, but we're, you know, when we start to do something different, we want to associate it with something because that creates the trigger for us to go, oh yeah, remember you want to yeah. breathe better. And so if you associate that with that moment of, hey, during my client service, that's also my time to breathe better, that association will get you to start working with that more naturally, because it's hard to remember those things at the moment. Right. Um, no, that's a, that's a great, thank you, Wendy. And mm -hmm. we're really, you're trying to change a habit. Yeah. And if you can figure out a part of your day, like every time you're cleaning up around your station, maybe you just tune into your breathing. If you have a chance to pinch your nose and hold for a few minutes doing the five second holds for two minutes, like we started in the warm up, that's another place during the day. I encourage that frequency a lot if you can. Absolutely. So you're, you're creating a habit, but you're also starting to hack into your health potential. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So can I can... add one more thing before we close? Yeah. Go so the for last it. thing, Absolutely. the last thing that I wanted to just, it was an aha for me is most as hairdressers and you're working with your arms and your hands a lot is that may trigger a more upper chest breath. Mm -hmm. All your activity up here will create more arousal and more activity and more, maybe more hyper state that may trigger the more CO2, more feelings of breathlessness, more mouth breathing or hyperventilation. Your respiratory rate should be between 12 and 14. If it's higher than 14 in the 16, 18, 20, da, 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 that's needs to be addressed. But this can make that happen, right? right. Talking, listening, watching, all those things pull us up. So my challenge to everyone, and I think this is part of where we want to go further down the road is can you work with your upper body and do what you do and still have a breath in the low ribs and down into the side and low ribs, not just a belly breath in front, but you actually feel the low ribs on your side and the back ribs move with a nasal breath as it starts. That's my challenge to you. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, we still have a few moments, Sean. So if you want to just kind of share with them how a couple sure. of little things that they can use so to, there's a to start couple to signal of... that response more. Yeah. Let me back this up. Well, actually, I'm just going to stand. So there, you can put your hands here mm -hmm. if your shoulders are okay. You can also do this, but this doesn't give you a sense of ribs. This makes sure that you're just not pushing the belly and you get no movement in the back. That's the belly breath is, is in form is not informing you to breathe deep. Yeah. So it's here, or you can cross your hands behind and feel your ribs move into your hands, or you lie down with your knees bent, support your head if you need to, and feel the ribs move into the earth or into the bed that'll give you a sensitivity to as the exhale ends and the inhale begins what happens in those lower ribs and it's important that you aren't producing a force in the low ribs the ribs are responding to how the diaphragm begins to descend and increases the pressure in the abdomen it's not you doing it that's even an overworker syndrome is people will kind of try and push right. the belly out. <laughs> yeah. And I, on I the exhale, them. they'll push and squeeze the air in. I always coach my clients inhale from the low ribs up to the shoulders, like an accordion on the exhale, release from the shoulders through the chest down into the low belly. And that natural pause might be there, like Lori said, and then inhale, feel the low ribs and feel the bucket handles of your ribs expanding to the top. And then exhaling, releasing from the tops of the ribs through the shoulders, down through the chest, into the belly. Yeah. yeah. And this is super important, even just from the standpoint of this is something that I learned through our training, Sean. The diaphragm is also an incredibly important supportive aspect to our back. And how many of us hairdressers have back issues out there? I it's was one of huge. Them. And it so, is again, huge. Again, talking about this cycle factor, it's like, oh, well, my back is sore. So I tighten all of my, you know, lower portion of my body. Well, of course, then we're going to start to breathe up here because there's so much tension down here. Yeah. And guess what? The more we in breathe up here, the less we're supporting our back with the muscles from the breathing muscles that actually support the back. So that yeah. low, that low breath breathing down in the diaphragm, it actually is better for your back too. It's going to help with back pain. And your leg strength. I had a client who I gave him that exercise we just did about how to breathe. Mm -hmm. And I did another one about how to reset the diaphragm when it's tight. Mm. And he thought he had hip weakness. He had everybody doing all these exercises for his hips. And 
we did that. And he went from having like what he thought was weak to power where he was jumping on his foot after those two exercises for four minutes. Yeah. And he's 78 years old. So, you know, that's where I had the aha. You asked me early on, like, how'd you get into this? Like, it just kept feeding me that the breathing and the physiology actually promoted people's strength, their stability, their mm -hmm. spinal health, all these things. Like, <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes, surely the posture is better with the low breath. Your posture is going to naturally be better with the low breathing. So, yeah. It, and here's the thing, man, like we, we could do another couple hours of this because oh. <laughs> this is incredibly powerful stuff. The reason that Sean and I are so geeked out on this <laughs> is because this we're just currently touching on. I mean, if this is the entire bowl of information around this stuff, like yeah. you are getting the most microscopic piece of information right now. This will affect everything. It will yeah. affect your mental health. It will affect the physical pains and aches in your body. It will affect your asthma, your you know, sleep. The, the list just goes on and on and on. Yeah. So yes. um, this is really powerful stuff. And I know that you're probably going to want to, to, you know, tap into more of it. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Yes, Shirley, we are total breath geeks. <laughs> and I catch this one comment with Lori too. One thing she noticed is that uh, breathing changes when I'm standing versus sitting. I feel much more movement in my ribs when I'm standing than when I'm sitting. Ah, yes. Oftentimes that is true because a lot of people don't feel the support of their legs when they sit. Right. And even if you, you can play with this, people, you know, everyone... Just roll back on your coccyx a little bit where your pubic bone comes up towards your navel and try and feel your breath change versus can you heavy your pubic bone forward and let your coccyx not have the pressure on the back of it. You're sitting more square on your sit bones and notice your breath. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So um, Sean and I would love to hear what you all took away from this because we are in the process of continuing to build out content around this and we are, and we'll talk about it in just a moment, but we're going to continue this education. So we'd love to hear from you if you don't mind just a, you know, a sentence or two of what, what was your biggest takeaway? If you could just choose one thing that was like, wow, this was really important for me. What's one thing that was really important for you? And as you um, type that in, we are actually going to do a six-week course for you all. So um, if you are interested in the six-week course, we're going to keep it incredibly affordable. There will be a fee for it, but we're going to keep it incredibly um, affordable because we want to really get this information to as many people as possible. On the screen is the website. It's movingintoharmony.com backslash invisible breathing behind the mask and we'll put, <laughs> pop this into the chat too so that you can extract it from the chat but if you are interested in joining us for that six week breathing course you just go to here put in your information we'll send you more information about it yeah and very affordable i mean that's kind of a relative term but sure under 75 dollars for six weeks of lifetime changing opportunities that you can take into all aspects. We'll get into exercise. I mean, it'll be a program that will suit anybody who wants to improve or harness the health yeah. and won't be all behind the mask. No. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, kind of coming back to the mask thing, it's like, we, um, we wanted to do this because we knew that people were having challenges with, with the mask on their face all day. But really, everything that we've shared with you today is it's breathing. It's not breathe, It's not necessarily just about breathing behind the mask. It's just about breathing. And, you know, one thing that was really important for me too, Sean, as I started to do this training, I want you to really also consider the fact that everything that we do has other effects. And that effect is also about mental because let's face it, we do have stressful days. We have stressful days in the salon. We have stressful days with our family. And so if we can touch into this stuff with the breath, 
if we can touch into that sensation of, oh man, like what does it feel like to feel breathless, but stay calm with it. We're also chain, training the mind to touch into discomfort, but yeah. stay relaxed, to stay calm. So, um, yeah. you know, this j isn't just about breathing. It's, it's about also our mental health and our mental resilience, right, Sean? Oh my gosh, that is a, such a sweet comment that that's your resilience. That's your, your strength is learning how you respond to the challenges that are in front of you. Mm -hmm. And in, in my experience with what's been going on and what continues to go on, it's real easy to get caught up and react and get tight and get all these things. The moment I can come back to some very simple breathing awareness, what happens in the day for me or do the breathing exercise, just that simple five second pinch hold for three minutes, as Lori was saying, like it just totally calmed me down. It, it gave me perspective on, okay, do I really need to pay attention and, put a lot of energy into that or is it actually not serving me and I can do it in a different way it's resilience is key and you actually train your resilience with carbon dioxide tolerance it's the science is there which we'll share in that six weeks absolutely um, thank you all for jumping in and sharing what you learned. This is, again, this is super helpful. Sean and I are continuing to build out this six week course. And like I said, we will definitely be sharing that with you, but um, we would love to have you. So yeah, yeah I'm going to pop this up Wait, one more time. Is... Um, if my Sam via team could just pop this link into the chat so that people can actually extract it from the chat, that would be super helpful. But Sean, thank you so very much for taking your time tonight. This is I really do feel that this is such incredibly valuable information. You and I talk about it all the, all the time, how frustrated we are that this information isn't more accessible because yeah. once you know how to do this, once you know how to work with your breath, the, the, the potential is just so endless. Yeah. You will really find a lot of answers to some of the things that just don't seem to fit or, you know, nothing against doctors, but sometimes doctors don't have answers to some of the different things you're experiencing in your body. Mm -hmm. And some of these things start to figure themselves out through the breath. So it's not only treating things you're struggling with, but also take you beyond to where you can actually start to cultivate your own health and improve your performance in life. And I mean, like, Andrew said just the possibilities and the things that people have expressed who've been a part of this is it's the juice. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Well, thank Sean. you for having me. I, I, I feel so honored to be able to share and, you know, we're brothers. So <laughs> that's the, the best part of it is so funny because you're we talking about like, well, should we do this from our own studio? Should we do this in my studio? Yeah. Where should we do it from? But thank you all so very much for joining us tonight. Make sure you go and give Sean a follow. He's very active on Facebook, just under Sean Float. You can also find him on Instagram, at Sean M. Float. Um, of course, you can connect with me through social too. If you uh, don't have a chance to get to the website, you can just send either of us a message too, and we'll make sure you're part of the information going out about the breathing group. 